Paul, good to see you. Thanks for joining me here on this uh, conversation around innovation in water. How are you doing? I'm great, really good. It's a pleasure to be speaking with everybody. Great, thank you, Paul. So um, when it comes to innovation in water, there are, I mean, it's talked about a lot. Everyone wants to be innovative or adopt innovation processes or from an investor point of view, invest into the next uh, most innovative widget or hardware or software. But actually, that might not be such a good thing when it comes to water, right? There's there's different perspectives and definitions of innovation. So tell us how you, you see this and actually why that was one of the factors that drove you to um, go on and do a PhD. Well, I guess like a lot of people that work in the water sector, we all want to have an impact from the work that we do, a positive impact. We know that that's the goal and it's well motivated and well intentioned. We often think that innovation is one of the ways we can have that impact. But I think people mean different things when they say that word. And I became very intrigued with the fact that a venture capital investor, for example, might mean something very different when they use the term disruptive innovation. Whereas a utility, when they say they need innovation, they may need something that will reduce the energy costs, get them to carbon neutrality. Um, if you're a technology provider, you might have a different perspective as well. So even have you a common framework? And the other thing I noticed, and I'm sure you would have as well, Tom, and others said, when we talk about the industry, we say things like it's very conservative and it takes a long time. But like, where's the evidence? Like, has anyone actually looked at this? Is that true? Or do we just keep saying it? And so I was curious to look at whether this was evident based on case studies, whether it's different to other industry sectors, how would it look compared to energy or health? And uh, so that was the driver to create a common framework that we could all then come together and have a meaningful conversation with a common understanding. Fantastic. So what was the title of your PhD to kind of bring all this together? Tell us more about that. It was called The Dynamics of Water Innovation. And I was very fortunate to have a fantastic promoter in case Beisman uh, of Wageningen University and leader of the Wetsis Research Centre, who this is an unusual PhD because it wasn't about any one technology, but it was about all of the technologies that we've seen and case and myself got together and came up with a thesis and over four or five years, we built the thesis steadily. And it was a voyage of discovery. There were things that we were surprised at during it and we discovered, and that's what made it intriguing. Amazing. So you mentioned about this entrenched kind of viewpoint that the water industry is conservative and it takes time. So what did you see that was kind of different to that that opinion? Because I, I listened to the podcast you did with uh, Reinhard Huber, and there's this time frame quoted of just over 15 years, right, in terms of from idea, purely from an idea through to kind of commercial success. So, so what you see over this timeline, and I've not been in the sector, you know, maybe I'm talking about over two decades that I would have seen a technology go from a whisper to a billion dollar market. So it can happen. And the question is, how, what, how long does each stage take? What can accelerate it? Why do things succeed? Why do some things not succeed? Is there any pattern at all? Obviously, leadership is a key part of, of that growth. You've mentioned before about figures like Andrew Benedict that was in the right place at the right time, making the right decisions to help that MBR grow to become what you said was a whisper through to a billion dollar market. Towards the end of the thesis, as we looked at many different factors, leadership came up again and again. It's a very important component. Nowadays, when I look at new technologies, I look at the technology as, it's like, does the car have four wheels? Because it, it just needs to have four wheels. We're not leaving before that's established. It needs to work. After that, is there a market? And then probably as importantly is, who's driving the bus? Uh, you know, who's if it's a, if it's a horse race, who's the jockey? Are they going to get that across the finish line? Because it because of the timelines, you need to have a belief and a sustained commitment to what you're doing that will sustain you through a number of years. Because you're not going to be in and out in three years. Andrew Benedict has just done an IPO with his second company. Uh, maybe it could be his third if we count Fibercast. So these people that lead these things, they are compelled to believe, and you need that, I think, to succeed. Paul, looking ahead, how, how do you hope that the results from the, the PhD will help to essentially provide more clarity on innovation and also help to make sure that the investment dollars that are coming into the water sector are going to the right innovations? You know, one of the biggest obstacles towards continued investment in the water sector are unrealistic expectations, which leads to disappointment and disillusionment 
and no further investment or it limits the amount of investment whereas the opposite is true a virtuous circle is positive experiences that lead to good results so if we can all come in with good expectations and understandings at the outset and say hold on this is a ceramic membrane it that's a discontinuous innovation that is good technology for a new entrant because they are breaking with the manufacturing process UV LED is similar. So you look at it through that lens and you think, okay, that's suited to this type of player. It may take a bit longer. Why are people going to use that over the polymerics? Whereas, um, you know, satellite based leak detection, it's a totally new function or an MABR. So once you can understand early on where you sit, you can make a better decision on what's the right strategy, what's the right investment approach, what are the timelines and the risk associated with it. So I hope it'll create a dialogue. And I think it is, that's what I'm seeing is, People are now picking up on these ideas and that was that was the whole ball along.